Hello friends, welcome to Summerween. This is my third year, third year participating in Summerween. I'm so excited. It's one of my favorite readathons to participate in. So if you don't know what Summerween is, Summerween is a week-long readathon hosted by Olivia Reads a Latte and Gabby from Gabby Reads. And this readathon is a way to bring the autumn season, to bring horror and spookiness and thrillers into the summertime in anticipation for the spooky season. There are a few prompts that you can follow. I will put them on the screen right here but I don't necessarily look at the prompts to pick my TBR <laughs> which seems counterintuitive but you can either follow the prompts or kind of just do your own thing. So I want to show you my TBR as well as some hopefuls because I have like six or seven books on my TBR and I know that I'll probably only get to like five of them. This might be surprising for some people and even myself because I didn't love another book by this author, but I'm very intrigued by this new release and that is Everything the Darkness Eats by Eric LaRocca. But something about this synopsis intrigues me. And then I also have the ebook and the audiobook for Dead 11, which I think a few people are going to be reading for this readathon. It is a new release. I think it came out last week. The cover is so fun and stunning and I just think the premise is really fun. So those are the two audiobooks that I have. I also want to read The Haunting of Alejandra. I've read another book by this author. It was a novella called The Goddess of Filth and I was seeing really good reviews about it and it just didn't work for me. I ended up giving it like a 2.5 stars. There was something rushed and a little bit messy about it. So I was very interested to see like a full length novel rather than a novella that was like less than 200 pages. Then I also really want to get to Our Hideous Progeny. It's not a reimagining of Frankenstein. My partner read it and said it's more like an extension of Frankenstein and that it almost exists in that same world just at a different period in time. I love Frankenstein. It's it's one of my favorite classics of all time. It's one of those books that I love rereading. So I was very excited about this. And again, my partner gave it five stars and really loved it. And then lastly, I really want to read My Heart is a Chainsaw. This has been calling out to me. I more recently read a slasher slash final girl type of book and I enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite, but I enjoyed the concept a lot. So I'm very excited to try My Heart is a Chainsaw. Stephen Graham Jones is the author that got me into horror. So so I, I'm just hoping that this is like a five stars, okay? I haven't had many five stars this year and I'm hoping that Summerween turns that around. If you were curious, if you've been following me since that Summerween, um, Skeletoni. Skeletoni is somebody who lives in my house full time. He got an upgrade last October and here he is. Skeletoni in all of his glory. He now has bats and gravestones around him. That has been the biggest change. Before he was juggling heads, now he is in a graveyard. Hello, I can't explain my look right now. It's giving just rolled out of bed, but uh, it's one, it's 1 p.m. It's actually 1 p.m. on the 4th of July and I have been in a horrendous reading slump. Like I've been DNFing things left and right. Let me tell you, I was highly anticipating this. This is the author of The Push. This is her sophomore novel. I loved The Push. It was one of my favorite books last year. I think about it all the time. Now I'm not a big lover of domestic thrillers. I'm especially not the biggest fan of like the unreliable woman or the drunk woman or the unhinged woman trope, which has been like a huge theme in thrillers since, I don't know, Girl on the Train, maybe even further back than that. But that's what I've seen as a trend, which is why I don't read a lot of thrillers. Now the push borders on this, it's domestic. It kind of has an unreliable narrator. It kind of has a narrator that you're not sure if she's unhinged or not. And so I was hesitant going into it, but I ended up loving it. So I was very excited about this. I DNF'd it at 30%. I, there, mm. I went and read some reviews because I was curious if maybe it was my mood since I have been in such a bad slump and all I've been doing is watching True Blood. <laughs> The reviews said a lot of the same things that I was feeling in that the beginning portion was kind of interesting and it was setting up some things that I was like, okay, I'm on board for this. And then it just started to get very boring. And I use boring subjectively because boring for me, it was boring for me as a reader who isn't the biggest fan of domestic thrillers. So again, I thought it was me, but the reviews sort of confirmed how I was feeling. Anyway, I DNF'd it. I'm very just sad about it. 
I DNF'd two other books in the meantime, but I'm talking about this one specifically because this is Summerween and this was going to be on my Summerween TBR, but I was like, oh, I need something to get me out of this slump. So I thought maybe this would do it. It didn't. That was a long-winded story just to tell you that I'm starting Summerween early because I did start You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight and I'm 50% in. I'm enjoying it. It's definitely making me want to keep reading. It has that pacing of like, you don't want to put it down. Even though it's hard to put down, I'm not fully loving it. There's something about the writing that's like not clicking with me fully in the sense that like, there's a lot of pop culture references. And I don't know, I, I just like don't feel connected to the characters. I don't know if in a thriller you ever really do feel connected to characters, but this is like an homage to slashers. So in this book, Camp Crystal Lake, which is in a slasher film that I'm forgetting right now, maybe I'll put it on the screen if I remember, but wherever that movie was filmed, this book is located. Our main character and some co-workers, they work at this camp giving a final girl experience to the people who decide to come to it. So they know they're signing up for this experience, but they don't know how intense it's going to be. They have to sign like legal forms that they can be touched and pushed and like anything can happen. So by the time we are meeting our main character, it's like the last week of this summer camp and they're gearing up for like their biggest and best final girl performance. But weird things are starting to happen that are outside of the performance that are creeping out a lot of the characters. There are some people who've gone missing but they thought they just quit. But did they really? I don't know. I actually don't even know. <laughs> so I'm not spoiling anything. So yeah, it's really holding my attention and it is fun because I feel like it gives you that slasher vibe. Not that I really watch slashers because I'm a chicken, but reading it has been really fun. Again, I have some issues with it, but I do think that I ultimately will have a good time and I think it's the perfect thing that I needed to get out of my reading slump. I just got home from work and I didn't get to update you yesterday, but I did end up finishing You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight. And then I got 30% into the Riley Sager book. What is that called? The only one left. So we'll start with You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight since I did finish it. I ended up giving it a three stars. Basically my issues with this book, like why it wasn't a five star, I think it was a little too fast. Like I think that it being fast paced was really fun and it definitely got me in the momentum of reading but it was a little too fast. Things wrapped up a little too fast in the end and I was having a really good time. I wouldn't say it was like a five star feel throughout the reading experience, but it definitely felt like four stars. And then we got to the end and the reveal. And I feel like this is where horror and like thrillers always fall short for me. I found the ending to be a little bit cheesy and I didn't enjoy it. So overall, I do think it's fun, fast paced. It could totally get you out of a reading slump. I feel like it has helped me get out of the reading slump that I have currently been in for weeks. And I especially think that if you're a fan of slashers, this will be really fun for you. That being said, I started The Only One Left last night, not long after I finished You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight. And The Only One Left really captivated me right from the start. So we have a main character who she is a in-home nurse slash caretaker and when we're introduced to her, she is just ending a suspension, a year long suspension. And supposedly she was taking care of a patient and that patient died on her watch and it wasn't a natural death. So there were lots of investigations. They couldn't prove things one way or another. So she was never convicted of murder, but she did get put on suspension because they were like, it's not a good look if we keep letting you work after this whole scenario has played out. So you need to be on suspension. So we meet her at the tail end of her suspension. Turns out she's getting assigned to 
this woman who's known in the town for murdering her entire family. They've never been able to prove that she murdered her family, but there have been tales and rumors going around this town for generations, and our main character grew up listening to these tales and these rumors, and so she's actually extremely frightened of this woman, but she decides to take the job because she doesn't really have any other options with everything else that has happened and the suspension. So she takes it and she's kind of in this place of like, should I build this connection with this woman to try to figure out if she murdered her family? But she's also very scared of this woman. I'm not sure that we have the backstory yet, but this woman is paralyzed and she can only use her left hand. So she does use a typewriter to kind of communicate things. And so there are these really cool inserts where there are like letters that she's written about what has happened, like things from her past. And I'm enjoying it. It's reminding me so much of like Bly Manor for some reason. It's like giving me Bly Manor vibes, although Bly Manor is more of a haunting. This one so far, as we know, is not paranormal, but I'm not 100% sure. And then it's just giving me kind of like Agatha Christie vibes, even though it is set in the 80s, which is probably why it's giving me more of the Bly Manor feels than anything else. But I don't know, I'm having a really good time and I'm happy to report this because my last Riley Sager was not a good time. <laughs> it was real bad. It was a really bad time. But anyway, I'm hoping to finish that today, actually. Hello, my spooky besties. I think I'm out of my reading slump. Fingers crossed. I think I'm out of my reading slump. I finished the last one left and I'm giving it four stars. This is by far, hands down, my favorite Riley Sager book that I have read. I can't say too much about the plot. We're kind of just trying to figure out what happened with Kit, but also what happened with Lenora. And did they do something nefarious? Did they kill people? And I think it's an interesting dynamic that they're both in these circumstances where people believe them to be murderers. And are they, aren't they? We do figure out in the end, you do get all of the answers. I felt like it was really satisfying. I definitely loved this experience because I'm someone who, when I'm reading a mystery or a thriller, I just accidentally try to solve it in my head. I'm not even really consciously doing it. I'm just automatically like, oh, she probably did it. And in here, this was one of the first times, and maybe it was because I was in such a reading slump that I was just enjoying the process of listening to a book and like not feeling as if I need to DNF it or go watch True Blood for 72 more hours. I wasn't really trying to figure out who did it. It was really fun to get the reveal because I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't making assumptions or guesses about who did it. So when you finally get the reveal, I was like, oh, this is fun. Also, if you're looking for an audiobook, I think this was a great audiobook experience. I really loved the narrator of this audiobook. I think it was one of the better narrators of the three books that I've listened to from him. So I highly recommend if you're looking for like a fun, fast paced audio, I do feel like the pacing was really great in this one. I didn't feel weighed down by any of the narrative choices. I felt like it was a great pace from start to finish. It didn't feel like there were any lulls at any point in the book for me. I was constantly interested. So I don't know, you know, you might have a different experience than me, but this was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun. I 
Hello friends, happy day two of Summer Ween. So I didn't vlog much on the first day and actually things are a little bit out of order. You would have noticed this by now, <laughs> but we just got back from the bookstore and I ended up getting two books, which you would have seen. I got these two. So I got The Last Housewife, which I'm really tempted to read this for the readathon. <laughs> but I also have In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, which is technically set in fall. And I realized that I don't think any of the books that I had on my TBR initially were set in the fall. So it's a contender. I always change my TBR what's new this is supposed to be culty also if you watched my video where my cats recommend me books and then i got the jasad air i actually didn't realize until i posted a picture in the discord that this is out early but this is a new desert fantasy i am so excited to read this one i think once summer ween ends this is gonna be what i pick up i love desert fantasy so much i did start the haunting of alejandra and i'm unfortunately dnfing this only because this is just very much about mother and I'm not gonna lie yesterday which a big part of why I didn't vlog much yesterday was my mom's 12 year anniversary of being passed away and so I just like am not really in the mood for books specifically about motherhood so I had to DNF this one it's not a DNF forever it's not a DNF because I'm not enjoying it it's just a little too close to home right now but I did start dead 11 and I'm really enjoying it I like the mixed media format I like that there's a mystery and that these people are stuck in 1994 and that there is some sort of reason that they're stuck in this year and they're kind of stuck on this island. So I'm really liking the mystery of it all. It is just a slow burn. Like in the first 20% I was like okay let's let's go. There's some creepy things that happen but it's just so slow burn so I'm concerned about that because it's 400 and something pages and I feel like it's gonna need to have a really good payoff for me to really love this but I highly recommend the audiobook because it is mixed media. So it has multiple narrators and they put a lot of work into this audiobook. So I highly recommend. I think it's definitely elevating my reading experience and I am enjoying the creepy moments of it. I, it's just very slow burn. So it would be hard to recommend it to a lot of people unless you absolutely love slow burn. My camera's about to die. <laughs> so I will update you a little bit later. So I am almost done with Dead 11 and I'm I'm still having the same issue I was before where I feel like the pacing is just a little bit too slow and what keeps me going is that I'm really interested in the mystery but we're kind of trying to solve almost three different mysteries here so the first mystery itself is obviously like the island and what's going on on this island why do they continuously live in 1994 why do people watch the same exact things over and over and over again and do the same habits over and over and over again like it's groundhog's day so that's like the first big mystery and the overarching mystery because that's what's like drawing people to this island and then we have the mystery of willow's son so there's this tragic accident where willow loses her son and in the aftermath of that in the aftermath of her grief she feels like somebody's in her house and then the next thing she knows in her son's bedroom and clifford island is scrawled on the floorboards of her son's room and she thinks that her son wrote it and that he is somehow telling her that she needs to go to this island and and figure out what happened to him. So she decides to start a new life on this island and ends up going missing. So then Willow going missing is like the third mystery in this book and her brother then enters into the story and you get a lot of his POV but it's really not about him. He's kind of just the vessel of learning what happened to Willow. So he's very forgettable. So like the most intriguing thing to me is obviously Willow going missing but mainly what is going on on this island. I just feel like things are really repetitive and I don't know if that is because of the multiple uses of formats in here. So you have text messages, you have letters, you have interviews, you have emails in conversations and interactions with characters. And I think there's just a sense of repetitiveness. And I wonder if it's because like in the interview, we're getting a character saying certain things and then you're kind of watching those things play out in the POV outside of the interview. But there's also something that just keeps me going. And I think it's the fact that I really wanna know what's going on on this island and i'm definitely more interested in it at this point in the story because you are seeing a lot more glimpses into the horror of this island than anything else and it does make you feel fairly uncomfortable i don't know how i'll feel about this book i think it really will depend on the ending but i'm not hating it like I, there's 
something compulsively readable about it. Otherwise, I think we're gonna watch the first episode of the first season of Yellow Jackets, and I'm very excited because I've been hearing nothing but good things about this show. I think we're gonna do that tonight. Maybe order some pizza because I don't feel like cooking. I just got my coffee and I'm gonna get ready for the day, but it's day three of Summer Ween and I wanted to talk to y'all because I have finished a book and I have really mixed feelings on it. Also, I, I'm kind of in a dilemma because I don't know what I wanna read next and I know that I had a TBR for this, but per usual, my mood is not matching what I put on that TBR. <laughs> so I finally finished Dead 11, which I had already given you an update that I started. I sort of gave you the premise of it. But I think unfortunately for this story, it is too long for what it is and it was too repetitive. There was a lot of telling us things and not showing us much of anything in my opinion. I think because of the mixed media, like we have an interview formats, we have text messages, we have letters. We're going between first and third perspective. Like that's what kept me interested. Also the very beginning, which I, I'm pretty sure I mentioned is so intriguing. Like it really sucks you in, but I did kind of struggle in the beginning, but just something about it being a mystery, something about this island, just like really intrigued me. So I definitely wanted to keep reading to figure out the mystery. But once you figure out the mystery, I feel like I was left a little unsatisfied. And I've said this before, I'm not somebody who needs a resolution in horror. And in here, because there is that mystery slash thriller element to it, we do get a resolution for that. Like we get the resolution about what happens to Willow, who is the sister who's gone missing. And we get the answer about why this town is stuck in the 90s. But it's, um, it's a little unsatisfying in ways for me. I have so many thoughts about how it was told. And I think ultimately, like I said before, it was just too long. It was just too long for what it was. Also, I really liked our characters for the most part. I really liked Willow and her brother. I liked the kids that were in this town because they were the ones that started to really question why their parents and generations of people have been doing this on this island. Um, so I really enjoyed seeing that perspective. I also think that like the horror elements were well done when we got them. I just felt like we didn't get enough of them. So yeah, I think I would settle on a 3.5 because of my mixed feelings about this book. So that leaves me with my dilemma. I don't want to read anything on my TBR. I tried yesterday to read the Eric LaRocca book and I just was not in the mood for it. There was something about the writing style that just wasn't really working for me at the time. I think it was because reading Dead 11, like that is another thing about the writing style that I didn't mention. It's pretty dry, it's pretty dense. And I think that's why it felt like the book went on forever, forever. And it was only 400 and maybe 40 pages or something like that. So it wasn't like as long as other books that I read, but it felt like it was never gonna end, ever. And obviously I'm always in the mood for fantasy. So I was thinking about trying to pick up a dark fantasy. And I think one of the shorter dark fantasies that I have is Juniper and Thorn. It's calling to me, okay? It's calling to me because it's a dark fantasy and I think it's supposed to have horror elements in it, but we'll find out. So I think I might try to sample that audiobook and see how I'm feeling. I also have Our Hideous Progeny, which I'm still very interested in. So I'm actually gonna finish getting ready and sample that right now. And then I will have an update for you. Okay, so it is later on Sunday, which is day three of Summerween, and I was going through a little bit of a crisis earlier. I think it's because <laughs> I didn't get a lot of sleep, and so I'm in a really weird 
mood just generally. And as you saw, I was very indecisive about what I wanted to read. I did listen to Juniper and Thorn on audio because I wanted an audio and I didn't really like the narrator very much. This is another weird thing I'm going through. I'm not loving audiobooks right now, which is so weird for me to say because I am a big audiobook lover. Like I always have at least one audiobook that I'm listening to alongside reading things physically. And I've just been very picky about audiobooks these days. I don't know if I'm just in a rut, if I'm getting burned out or something, but I've been really picky about audiobook narrators. Whereas before, if I didn't care, I would read whatever. But um, no, I've been super picky. So I changed some plans around. I changed some of my TBR around, but not too drastically actually. I'm pretty proud of myself. So you probably saw in some B-roll that I decided to try a chapter of both of these books. And I'm happy to say that both of them really sucked me in. So I think because obviously the audiobook is available since this is out and this is an arc, so the audiobook is not available. I'm gonna listen to the audiobook of this. I listened to a sample and the narrator is great. This is a Frankenstein reimagining extension. I don't really know, we will find out. And then the reformatory, I'm gonna be reading this physically. So I have both the ebook and the physical copy. So I'll be going back and forth, maybe reading this at night. I don't know, Tanana Reevedu tends to get really creepy for me. So I, I don't know if that's something I'm gonna do, but I'm I'm gonna be trying to read this physically. Who knows if I'll actually get to the end of this because it is f over 500 pages. It's almost 600 pages long. But this is like one of my most highly anticipated releases of the year and I feel like I just need to finally get to it. I keep thinking about it. I see it sitting on my downstairs cart and I look at it every day and think I should read that. <laughs> Who cares about quantity? Let's do quality. Okay, let's do quality. I haven't had many five stars and I feel like this could be a five star. Also, I bought these really cute magnet bookmarks. <laughs> so this one is a werewolf and I'll show you the other ones later, but there's a Dracula one, a Frankenstein, and I think a mummy. And I specifically got them for Summerween, but also the spooky season. Also just like, in general. I don't know how much reading I'll get done the rest of this week. I'm just anticipating that I'll probably finish Our Hideous Progeny and make a good dent in the reformatory, but I will catch you in part two of my summer ween vlog. I hope you enjoyed this first portion where I started early. <laughs> Let me know down below in the comments what you're reading for summer ween, and if you don't have anything to comment but you want to leave an emoji, feel free to leave some spooky emojis like pumpkin, bat, spiders, whatever your heart calls to, <laughs> and I will talk to you next time. Bye.